Former Slovakian Prime Minister Robert Fico's leftist party has won Slovakia's parliamentary elections after campaigning on a pro-Russia platform. In his first comments since the vote, Fico said that Slovakia had bigger problems than the war in Ukraine. During the campaign, he vowed to end Slovakia's robust military support for Kiev and criticized both NATO and the EU. His party secured just under 23 percent of the vote, beating the centrist Progressive Slovakia party by 5 percent. And DW's Brussels bureau chief Alexander Fanamen joins us from Bratislava for more. Alexandra, we've just heard from former Slovakian Prime Minister Robert Fico. What else did he say? Well, in his press conference uh, here at his party's headquarters, the, we are still at his party's uh, headquarters here in Bratislava, Mr. Fico made clear that he is ready to start talks with potential coalition partners, and he also said he's just waiting for a traditional phone call from uh, the president because now he has the mandate to form a new government. I don't know whether you can hear it, but apparently there is a protest outside of the party headquarters. But Mr. Fico was also asked about, you know, what his plan is for Slovakia. And, of course, he was asked whether he intends, as indicated on the campaign trail, to radically change his country's foreign policy on Ukraine. And as you just mentioned, he said that he wants to do everything possible to start peace talks, that the war in Ukraine is a huge strategy, but he also said that people in Slovakia, that they have bigger problems. And that is why I ask him whether his victory can be seen as a, a win for Vladimir Putin. But uh, Mr. Fico didn't really want to, uh, to answer this question. He just uh, stressed that he is uh, um, entitled to have his own opinions on the war on Ukraine. Well, Alexandra, as perhaps that protester uh, where you are reminds us, this was a rather fraught election campaign, very bitter, as we've been reporting over the last couple of days, a lot of emotions, tensions flaring. So just how likely is it that FISA will succeed in finding allies to form a coalition to actually form this government and become the next prime minister? Well, I think that his chances are pretty good when we look at other parties uh, with that, whom he could start coalition talks. One of them is a split off of his own party, and they seem to be quite open to potential negotiations. Another party is a nationalist Slovak party, and this is a party that uh, he worked with before. So his chances seem to be pretty well. However, he also stressed that during his press conference that talks could go for weeks. And looking at all of this more broadly, what about the perspective from the European Union? Should the EU be worried that a pro-Russian politician will likely be the next leader of Slovakia? Well, I would assume that there are uh, people in Brussels who are worried right now about Europe's unity when it comes to support for Ukraine. However, there are also political observers who are saying that it could be that Mr. Fico will soften his uh, stance here because, of course, he doesn't want to uh, leave the European Union. He still needs uh, EU funding to take care of some economic problems in Slovakia. But when it also comes to other hot-button issues such as migration or LGBTQ plus rights, there are many in Brussels that are worried that uh, Mr. Fico could join forces with, for instance, other um, governments in uh, Europe, with, for instance, the Hungarian government, and uh, that could, he could join the group of Eastern European countries who are openly hostile to liberalism. And for some insight on this, we're joined now by Milan Nitsch of the German Council on Foreign Relations in Bratislava. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Nitsch. Is this a Hello. win? Hello. Uh, <laughs> Hello. Tell me, just right off the top, is a win for Fico somehow possibly also a win for the man in the Kremlin, Vladimir Putin? Uh, no, I wouldn't say so. Um, Mr. Fico is described as pro-Kremlin, 
Um, but um, he was three time prime minister before. Um, he was um, in his campaign using pro Russian narratives. Uh, he was campaigning for stopping a bilateral military uh, support to Ukraine. But um, it's much more complicated than saying that he was a pro Kremlin candidate. Um, I think well, the pro-Russian disinformation were just jumping on the bandwagon of a very domestically focused campaign of Mr. Fico that focused on social um, high pension, social um, payment and so on. What, do you think that perhaps the international media are making too much of, of his criticism of, of NATO and the European Union in his campaign? Is it, was it more well, domestic issues? That It will be a very important um, a challenge for Fico when forming a government. And I think he will need to do something what he promised. He was caref very careful of promising only to stop the bilateral part of military aid, not all the flows of including mi uh, German military uh, supplies that go through Slovak territory. So it's much more complicated. And I think, I mean, Fico was making the statements in the campaign. So it was in a simplified way, fair to uh describe him as a pro-russian but let's see if he will really uh disrupt uh something i don't see him as viktor orban number two although okay. it shows cracks in uh, in in um support of ukraine in in amongst central eastern european uh, european countries let me put this and question he yeah. is there I'm... was also public opinion um was um, not so strongly behind a very strategic pro-Ukrainian um, uh, policies of the last few governments. It was a backlash against it. But now I think it's the day after elections and we will learn about Robert Fico, whether he will be, uh, he says there will be continuity in foreign policy. He will have to do something, but I, I want to uh, give him a chance to um, be a more pragmatic, and uh, not to be Viktor Orban number two in foreign policy, because also Slovakia's dependencies on Russia, unlike Hungary, um, in energy are very low. There was a decoupling of Slovakia from Russian gas mm -hmm. and from Russian oil. Okay, so well, I think, think he will not need he will not need Putin that much. So and there will be a lot of disinformation of Russia now coming in, framing it as a big victory for Moscow, which it is not. It's a, okay. It, this was very domestically driven elections where Ukraine was only part of the bigger issues. Point taken. And thank you for setting us straight. Milan Nietzsche of the German Council on Foreign Relations in Bratislava. Thank you for having me.